Hello everybody, so if you are watching this channel and interested in investing, or if you are already investing, then chances are you know at least some about Warren Buffett. He is likely the current most famous investor in the world. He grew up and still lives in Omaha, Nebraska, and he has had one of the best track records over his investment career. Namely, he has avoided major pitfalls which the majority of investors have fallen into in the past, such as the dot-com bubble. However, in becoming one of the largest investors and managing the empire that Berkshire Hathaway has turned into, this has come with some downsides. For example, over the last 10 years, he has merely matched the overall market, and this has been for a variety of reasons, but one of the largest reasons is that, in becoming such a gigantic company, Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio has essentially the same as uh, the overall market. It, it pretty much matches up with what most other major market indices have in them. And just to illustrate this, let's look at his current largest holdings. Number one is Apple. Uh, Wells Fargo's number two, then Kraft Heinz. Kraft Heinz really has not done well since he bought into it. Bank of America, he continues to add to that, even though that also has not done very well for him. Coca-Cola, American Express, Philip 66, US Bank Corp, Moody's, Bank of New York Mellon, Southwest Airlines, all these airlines he has sold out of, so this is probably not an updated uh, portfolio. And then from then on, more banks, General Motors, uh, Monsanto, Visa, and then others. Um, so in looking at all of these companies, all of them can be characterized by several traits. Uh, number one, they are very large. Uh, number two, they are included in many other market indices. And number three, they are established companies generally considered more safe than newer startups. Now, on the surface, this might not seem like a big deal, but with all these characteristics added together, this has made it very difficult for Berkshire Hathaway to outperform the market because it has essentially become the market. And even if Berkshire Hathaway might want to buy into smaller undervalued stocks, Berkshire Hathaway is just so massive at this point, you know, with hundreds of billions of dollars under management. So even buying an entire small cap company of, say, a market cap of 500 million wouldn't make much of an impact on them. Also, in having to buy very large and well-known stocks, Buffett can't really find anything that isn't already included in index funds and other market tracking ETFs. And as you know, having a stock included in an index fund does generally raise the valuation due to increased buying pressures on the stock from people who purchase the index fund only because it's an index fund, not because they like this particular stock. And because of this, you typically won't find stocks in an index fund which are undervalued in comparison with other stocks in the same industry that aren't in an index fund. And because of this, it is very hard for Buffett to find a major outlier which the crowd is ignoring. Uh, these stocks are generally small and not included in broader market indices. So while Buffett's real edge was being a contrarian back in the you know 1970s and 1980s, when he was managing in the hundreds of millions of dollars and he was able to buy Coca-Cola and Geico and all these other companies that he still has and he acquired them when they were very small and when they were just starting up he can't really do this on a large scale anymore and the third reason is perhaps the largest factor which has hindered Buffett and that is that these companies have generally been around for a long time and are very established and generally considered more safe than other newer companies. But this also comes with a cost in that the newer startups, even though most of them fail, they eventually, several of them do topple the established giants. You know, consider Apple back in its early days, you know, the 1980s and the 1990s, they would have been considered a very risky investment. They came very close to failing several times, uh, but eventually they came out on top and displaced other more established tech companies. Uh, you know, it's the same story with Amazon, same story with uh, Google, any of these other major companies right now. Uh, so now there was no real way you could have, you know, bought confidently into these major companies when they were just startups. But it does go to show that as the size of the money you are managing grows, it doesn't necessarily make it easier to outperform the market. And if anything, it makes it harder. And in, in Buffett's case, it has become a handicap at this point. He is essentially limited in what he can consider adding to Berkshire's portfolio. The company has to have a large enough market cap. The company needs to be established. And because of these prior two considerations, 
they are almost always already going to be included in the broader market indices. So with these circumstances, it is very difficult for Buffett to continue to beat the market, even though in the 1980s and 1990s and early 2000s, he was really, really good at doing that. So how could this give us small investors an advantage? Well, to begin with, we aren't limited by any of these considerations. We can consider small cap companies that likely aren't included in the broader market, and we can also consider newer companies which we believe stand a significant chance of beating the established players. And the established companies which Buffett has to buy have essentially almost reached their plateau state before they decline as these newer companies begin to take over. So the real takeaway from this is that you as a small investor can use the strategy Buffett used during the majority of his career when he was very successful of finding undervalued stocks which were generally overlooked as small cap companies and which were generally not included in the broader market indices, at least not as much as most companies which are more well known. This was Buffett's real edge during the time when he outperformed the market and now you as a small investor can use this same strategy. So if you liked this video, I'd just consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Let me know why down in the comments, and I hope to see you again.